Hello there, welcome to another Wisdom for Life. I'm here with Stephanie Ackrill, who is a business development advisor, and we are talking about how Stephanie got into doing triathlons. So could you talk us through those? How did it all start? Why, why a triathlon? Yeah, good question. Why a triathlon? Most people say that to me, to be honest. Well, my other half um, was training for an Ironman, which is like an ultimate triathlon. It, like It's a real long distance. And I was a little bit jealous. So I thought, oh, I want to do something. So whatever he does, I want to do, basically. So I entered my very first triathlon. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to enter one. This is going to be amazing. Then I took a step back and realised, oh, I can't actually swim. It's an issue. Yeah, I can't swim. I don't own a road bike, and I've never actually been on one. And I don't think I could run longer than a mile, and it took me about 13 minutes. So I thought, yeah, really, maybe you need to train for this and maybe actually do some sort of swimming, for example. So originally you weren't going to train, you thought you could just turn up and go for it? It's not so much that I wasn't going to train, I just never really thought about exactly what's involved within a triathlon. You know, it's it's three sports, I think running or being a cyclist or swimming themselves are sports in themselves, aren't they? And then it's like, oh yeah, I'll just do all three. Nightmare. And had you done stuff before? I mean, you've already said you don't, you hadn't done swimming and you didn't own a road bike, but had you, you were you... Were you exercising? Were you like a gym fanatic or something? There must have been something going on. I'd like to say I've always been into fitness. Yeah. But I don't think I've always enjoyed it. Right. Um, Because I was in the Navy when I was younger, fitness was a thing. You had to do fitness. And then I got into bodybuilding, which sounds a little bit scary, but I did like a fitness competition that way. And then after that, I got into CrossFit. So I've just kind of gone to different types of fitness all along so it's not that I was unfit and or like a couch potato and then suddenly thought yeah I'll do a triathlon. So that first one what was how did it happen I mean did you how much training did you do? So much training right is unbelievable so I thought the first place to start would be to get a swimming coach so my partner Carl his coach um, Taff he had a friend who was local called Ian and he was a triathlon coach as well and also a swimming coach um, so I got in touch with him and then he started training me and my first swimming session was at Kelly College in Tavistock and it's a massive Olympic size 50 metre swimming pool and I remember just getting in thinking oh my god like what am I doing he tried to get me to put my face in the water I did and cried my eyes out panicked cried I thought there's no way I'm going to be able to do this so then he started teaching me. I could do breaststroke, but I couldn't do front crawl. Mm. So he started teaching me, and I could started to do like one length front crawl, but not with my face in the water. My neck was out like some sort of crazed giraffe. Like it was, it was crazy. It sounds uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable and really, really tiring. But I thought if this is the way that I'm going to get through it, so be it for the first one. But it just so happened that one day Carl came back from sea, and we went up to the swimming pool, and he taught me a few moves the next thing I had my face in the water and I was swimming properly and it's probably the best thing that I've ever done because I can actually swim now right and in open water so it's not just a swimming pool I can actually go in the sea right because I guess that's the one that's the real skill isn't it of the three presumably you could always run you could always ride a bike but yeah hopefully (laughs) but learning to swim that I mean front crawl swim that's a big deal it is a big deal it really is and sometimes I think I forget how far I've come Mm. I'm three triathlons in now and I can swim in a swimming pool for over two and a half kilometers no problem I can get in the sea and I can swim and literally a year and a half ago I couldn't even put my face in right I forget how far I've actually come wow so this has all happened in 18 months basically that's amazing so let's let's start with the first one then so talk us through that first. So this is a big deal. You've never done anything like I've it. Never done it before. Talk us through the day. I found the triathlon online and it's part of the Castle Triathlon series and they run them all over the UK. So I thought a good organised event, different distances, this will be a good one for me. And it was actually at Hever Castle in Kent. I'm a bit of a history geek as well. I'm one of them people that are really weird and into everything. Um, and that was actually the childhood home of Anne Boleyn. And the race was the Henry VIII race. And I thought, this is it. It's a sign. It's Destiny. the one I'm supposed to do. We went there. Obviously, Carl being my supporter. And I did the swim. And it was OK. Um, I did a lot of breaststroke. But I did some front crawl. And I wasn't last out of the water. And I smiled the whole way around. 
But this is, I know Hever Castle. Yeah. You're in a lake, aren't you? You're not in yeah. a swimming pool. No, it's a lake. It's yeah. a lake swim. Was yeah. that not weird? A little bit. It's not as easy as swimming in a swimming pool and it stinks and the water's a bit minging, but you just kind of crack on and you take all the atmosphere in and it's amazing. Mm. Then I was out on my bike and halfway through there was a band singing or, or like a choir and I was like, oh my God, I'm doing a triathlon. I cycled past them and I fist pumped in the air and I was like that, yes, I'm doing a triathlon. Started crying like while I was on my bike and I was like, Steph, calm down. You've got more of the bike to do and a run to do yet before you can even call yourself a triathlete. Right. But I did, I got to the end. The man put the medal over my neck and I was like, oh my God, I can feel it now. I've got all goosebumps thinking about yeah. it. It was so good. And so how long after you decided to do it was this? How long for your first one? Um, so I entered just before Christmas of t- the 2018 and the triathlon was September 2018. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah so so it's a while. Yeah, I had a but... good old stint at training. Yeah, yeah. So I was ready. Okay, great. So you're on a, you're on a super high having completed that. What and you're then thinking, I want more of this. Yeah. So Carl, he decided to enter a half Ironman, which is called an Outlaw, which is in Nottingham. Yeah. And the day before there was a, a shorter distance. I was like, I'll do that. Makes sense. We were going up there anyway. Um, it was double the swim that I did the first time round. Yeah. A little bit more of a bike and another kilometre on the run. So it's adding to it a little bit. Right. I was like, yeah, I'll do this. And again, it was in a in a lake. It's like a rowing lake. All right. Yeah. Still stinky? It wasn't too bad. I think there wasn't as many ducks and crazy things coming to get you in that one. <laughs> Just rowers. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you're entered for the second one. Talk us through that. Oh, the second triathlon. So... I entered the water and it was all female wave, which is fine, it's no problem, so it's just all women going. And I got in and I was thinking, this is it, like, this is the one where I'm going to do the whole thing, front crawl, everything's going to be amazing, like, I've got this. Claxon went, off you go, start swimming, I'm, I'm going, I've got this. Things are really good. The crowd's massive, you know, they're right there. Next thing you know, someone swims over the top of me by accident. Right. And I go underneath the water and the water gets in my nose and I panic and I panic. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. To find myself at the back of the wave. So I'm like, it's all right. Take a deep breath, keep going. But every time I went to keep going, I panicked and I was really scared and everybody was getting further and further away from me. And I was like, this is probably one of the most embarrassing moments of my life which is probably ridiculous because so many people would probably never even enter let alone think about being last I eventually came out the water and I was the last person out and I have never been in so many floods of tears in all my life and everyone was like yeah give it up for our last swimmer and everyone's clapping and everyone's cheering and I'm just thinking I really want the ground to swallow me up And I was like apologising to everybody. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My, Carl was there, obviously. Is it, is it a bit of a theme going that he's my number one fan. And he's shouting, is everything all right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. And I stood there. So I got out and I got to my bike and I stood there for about, it felt like forever, but I'm sure it was only a couple of minutes. And I thought to myself, oh, I don't want to go on. I just want to go home. I don't want to do this anymore. And I was in absolute turmoil with myself like what do I do like do I carry on everyone knows I'm here and I was like do you know what yeah get on with it get a grip right wetsuit was off onto the bike off I went and I was crying shocker the whole way around the bike and I was like oh god I can't believe I've messed that up but I was like it's over now someone's got to be last you're over it's you're out and I think I overtook 15 people on the bike right Got in the bike, got got in to transition, racked my bike, and the, the blokes, I don't know what they call them, marshals, were like, well done, you've made up loads of time. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, amazing. And then off I went on the run, and I think I overtook about 10 people on the run as well. So I wasn't last. And they do say that triathlons out one on the swim, but it really knocked my confidence. And yeah. I was thinking, I don't know if I can do another one again after that. Can you rem- remember what made you just carry on? What? What was it? Is it just something inside you? I think so. I think I just had a had a bit of a word with myself. Yeah. And because I I Instagram kind of what I do and everyone knew what I was doing and I just I didn't want to let people down. Like I had a coach and I didn't want to let Carl down. I didn't want to let myself down because I knew I could do it. 
I just thought, just keep going. And it just was something that just made me go, right, do it. Yeah. And off I went. And it's really bizarre because a lot of the time I'm like, I would give up. And I know if I would have given up and had not gone, I probably would never have done another triathlon ever again. Yeah. And I would have been really, really gutted, I think, if I'd not done any more or carried on. Yeah. Especially considering how far I've come, like not being able to swim and finally investing in a bike and everything else. Yeah, yeah. And so having done... So even at the end of that one, you you weren't last by any means... But did you still feel slightly like, I'm not sure I want to do this again? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I'd already had another one planned in. Yeah. <laughs> I'd already paid and entered yeah, another one, you know, as you do. Yeah. Which was at Castle Howard. So it's part of the same series that the Heaver Castle one was. Mm. But Castle Howard in Yorkshire, so it's right close to home. Okay. And it was actually on my birthday. It's got to be, it's got to be done then. <laughs> I don't do things by half. And I wanted my mum to come and see. And I just really thought it'd be a really good, mm. good one to do. And it was actually an Olympic distance, which was double everything. That sounds like a lot. Yeah, so it took a lot of me to think, shall I do this? Shall I cancel it? What shall I do? So actually what I did is I brought the distance down back to the original to a sprint distance. Right. So I went to Castle Howard and did that in July, just gone. Okay. I wasn't last out of the water and I wasn't last on the bike and I wasn't last out on the run and I absolutely loved every single minute of it and my mum there cheering like because she'd not seen me even be able to swim before let alone do all of the other side of it I came over the finish line I was like that yeah I've got this I've got this I can do more and that was a, a confidence boost for me and I'm glad that I brought the distance down rather than increase yeah so uh, you mentioned confidence there that's a good good uh, good little in to my next thing what how do you think it's changed you because it's quite like you said in 18 months that you've achieved a lot so what's it done for you personally or even for people around you do you think I think for me personally it's made me realize that I can do anything that I set my mind to and things are limits are just part of your mind you can overcome anything that you want to do if you'd have told me 18 months ago that I'd be three triathlons deep and I could swim, I'd probably say, you know, you're taking the mick now, you know, don't be daft. But in 18 months' time, I've got goals of my own and I'm thinking, actually, these are achievable. I can do this. Right. And I think that in other parts of my life, like even with work, like here at Hemsley Fraser, I was a lead generator for quite a long time and a role came up to be a business development advisor. And I think... I don't know whether it was triathlon that helped me or the fact that, you know, I enjoyed my job. I thought, I'm going to go for it. You know, well, yeah. I got the job, so it, something went right. The whole sort of physical well-being and mental well-being for you, they're definitely working at you because you yeah, massive. you got physically stronger and also mentally stronger yeah, by the sounds of it. Yeah. yeah. So what's next? Oh, Back into the North Pole or something? <laughs> do I tell you or do I not? I've been trying not um, to tell people because... I'm a little, well, I'm still nervous of failure, I'm not, you know. Yeah. But my next one that my coach has told me I'm to do is the Cotswolds 113, which is a half Ironman. Right. So it's 1,900 metre swim. Right. Which I think is just over 1.2 miles. I think that's how it works out. Okay. Straight into the bike, which is 56 miles. Right. And then it's a half marathon run. Okay. You know, as you do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. I'd absolutely love to be able to do a full Iron Man. Yeah. I don't think I'm ready to believe in myself just that far yet because that's double of everything of right. what the Cotswolds 113 is. So, but the Cotswolds 113 is our first world exclusive. <laughs> no one else knows. Everyone knows now. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I should enter it now. Yeah, now you everyone knows. Yeah, hey, you better do it. That's great. So, um, Given that it's been so good for you personally, have you got anything that you would say? Because, I mean, it is a big step, isn't it? You know, and especially there's something like the swimming that people aren't comfortable doing or haven't done before. What would be your little go-to tip for someone to get them started on, whether it's a triathlon or half marathon or whatever it is? What would be the way? I think it's just go for it. Like, it doesn't matter, don't overthink it, just go for it. And if it is a triathlon or if it's a run, just get out there and do something. Don't worry about entering a race or entering anything that's crazy distances or anything like that. Just go and enjoy the fitness side of it first. And then maybe look for something that's achievable and then enter and have that goal and and be focused towards it. Perfect. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.